Here we go again. We have Israel out and about trying to provoke Iran by attacking Syria. This article comes from RT. Syrian army says Israeli jets targeted Damascus countryside after Iran warned of repercussions. So Iran gave this warning against Israel about crossing red lines in Syria. So what does Israel do? They illegally fly into Syrian airspace, or maybe they didn't, and they fire missiles at least into Syrian airspace, and they strike targets inside the country. And again, this is just absolutely outrageous behavior that everyone just takes for granted because it's Israel. This is something that if any other country did to Israel, we would never hear the end of it. And uh, what is this all about? Why is Israel doing this? Uh, a lot of people have a lot of ways of looking at this. Uh, and a lot of people seem to be frustrated with Iran and Syria and Russia for not shooting these planes out of the sky. Uh, that, but that's what Israel wants. That's what the United States wants. They, they want a wider conflict in the region. They want to provoke Iran or Syria, or both of them, and make them look like the aggressors so that they can do whatever they want in response. Iran knows this. This is why Iran isn't reacting directly. This is why Syria doesn't. This is why Russia doesn't. It's a very patient, long-term strategy that's being played here. If you look at the conflict in Syria from 2011 to present day, you will see that it's Syria, Iran, and Russia who are winning that conflict, not the United States. Israel is doing these provocations specifically because they and their partners in the U.S. are losing this conflict. And I want to point something out to you, and again, uh, not to sound like a broken record, but this is from the 2009 Witch Path to Persia document from the Brookings Institution. And this is what they did to lay out the entire U.S. strategy against Iran back in 2009. It included proposing the Iran nuclear deal, the U.S. sabotaging it, blaming Iran for it, and then using that, that deal following through as a justification for more aggression. We, we see the U.S. doing this step by step by step, regardless of who's in power, whether it's Obama, Trump, or now Biden, doesn't matter. This single agenda has continued without missing a beat. I want to show you about this part in the Witch Path to Persia document, and uh, it's right here, the entire PDF, and I will link to that in the video description below. But it's a lot easier because I've already, I've been covering this since uh, 2012. <laughs> you know, this part, this article is from 2012. I've actually covered it long before that. But I want to show you this part about Israel. They're talking about Israel and its need to overfly all of these other countries in, in the region to strike Iran. So they're saying, you know, to cross Jordanian or Iraqi airspace, that would be problematic. Uh, they're saying how it would, might be preferable for Israel to carry out these strikes instead of the U.S., Israel can do it. They can look like the mad dog. Like I just said, people take for granted that they do these things. And once they get the conflicts started, the U.S. can wade in gradually, you know, saying, well, we have to help our Israeli allies. Besides, we all know the Iranians violated the deal and they want nuclear weapons. This is what the U.S. will say. This is what they've laid out in this document here. They also talk about Remind, remember, this is in 2009, the Israelis may want to hold off until they have a peace deal with Syria in hand, assuming that Jerusalem believes that one is within reach. I, I like how they, even back in 2009, Jerusalem instead of Tel Aviv, that's funny, which would help them mitigate blowback from Hezbollah and potentially Hamas. Consequently, they might want Washington to push hard in mediating between Jerusalem and Damascus. And of course, that was in 2009, and, and we know how they decided to handle the Syria issue. They decided to wage proxy war against it in a bid to overthrow the government and just wipe it off the map like they did to Libya, or perhaps turn it into a terrorist springboard that they could actually use to attack neighboring countries like Iraq or Iran. So why am I bringing this up? We have been hearing in the news about Israel 
fixing its relationships with all these other client regimes of the US and the region. And why do you think that might be? Why do you think they might be fixing all of these relationships with Israel and trying to normalize relations with Israel? So Israel can cross through their airspace to attack Iran. That's exactly why. This is, this is what this is all leading up to. The, the Arab Spring was meant to try to reorganize the region into a united front against Iran. Failing that, they're going to try to unite whoever they can at this point and including Israel in, a, in an Arab united front against Iran is extremely desperate, but that's what they're doing. That's what all of this is leading up to. Uh, so I just thought I would point that out. I've been continuously warning about this and I, I, I encourage people to please read which path to Persia and look through it. So this is a, this is a topic we're gonna have to continuously keep an eye on and, and revisit in future videos. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share it. Think about subscribing to my channel. It helps the channel grow and it's free to do. Check the video description below for the links to these articles, uh, as well as to the document, Which Path to Persia. And also look for ways you can help support my work, like by becoming a Patreon member. And to everyone everywhere helping me in every way, thank you so much for your support. That's what makes all of this possible. And as always, thank you for watching.